three hours of my life I can't get back. Would I watch it again? Probably. Anyway, hey guys, this is your girl Victoria. Back to you with another video. Now we got Married at First Sight, season 15, episode one, San Diego. This episode is called So Ready and So Cool. Once again, three hours. And, and also, this video is brought to you. Not, not really, but I'm going to say it anyway. This, this video is sponsored by James Allen. Okay, This whole episode, all of Married at First Sight, is sponsored by James Allen. Everybody else who does a review on this episode is sponsored by James Allen. Because there are so many, as someone else said, product placement of James Allen in this whole damn episode. I'm, they might as well sponsor my video too. Okay, so we got 10 new couples. Well, no, 10 new cast members, singles, whatever you want to call it. Five couples. We got Lindy and Miguel, Alexis and Justin, Kristen and Mitch, Morgan and Ben, and Stasha and Nate. For the, for the longest, I was calling her Stasia, but I guess it's, called, it's pronounced Stasha and Nate. Three hours. Anyway. So we start off with Lindy and M Miguel. So Lindy tells her friends that she's getting married. They're excited. She seems like a fun and bubbly person. But, you know, obviously we see later on in the episode, Alexis don't like her for nothing. Because she talked too much, even though Alexis admits that she talks too much herself. But whatever. So she seems like a fun, bubbly person. She reminds me of one of my friends. So I'm like, okay, I, I can dig it. I can deal with her personality. But her friends is a little concerned because one of them did call her emotional and crazy at times. So she doesn't know how that's going to play with her and her new boo that she going to get when she get married to him in two weeks. So Lindy, she said she ready for some kids and her match better want to have some kids because she got some baby making hips. So she, she just ready to get up in there and have her little kids with him and they ride off into the sunset. So we let's hope Miguel is that same type of person. And I'm, I think he's ready for kids too, but I, I don't know really what's his gameplay here. You know, he's into Dungeons and Dragons and we see that with his little fur outfit as he goes meet his friends to tell them that he's getting married in two weeks. And... First, his little friends, one of them was Sally. The other one, I think her name was Francesca. If it's not, I'm sorry. But they were just pretty much saying he don't be noticing the red flags and doesn't know when to get out when it's time to get out from seeing those red flags. And they make mention little subliminals, you know, because when you see some text on the girl's phone, then you give her another chance and then you see more texts on her phone. Then you give her another chance again and then you see more texts on her phone. And it's a never-ending cycle. They didn't say that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. But he agrees to that. But I'm just like, okay, can we stop with the negativity here? Because at this point, I understand you concerned for him and whatnot. But when he told them that he was getting married in two weeks, they seemed... Happy but apprehensive at the same time. And here we here goes Sally talking about, yeah, I don't think the person that he's going to be married to is the right person for him. How would you know? Okay, you can know your friends and what might be good for them or whatnot. But at the end of the day, that's their life. He chose to be on the show, so he knew what he was getting into. Not saying he needs to be abused and used and all that stuff. But at the same time, all these people that be getting on these type of they they know what they're getting themselves into, Okay. They know what they get. Let your man. Nah, I was going to say your man. Let your friend get on this show. Let her make us coin. Okay. Some people be getting on this show just to just to make a check. So times are tough out in these streets. You know, inflation. You know, gas prices are high for high high. We don't got time. You know, listen, people got to do little little side gigs. So let, 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 let the man get on the show. Get his little check every uh, episode. And then overall for the whole season. And whatnot. Sally, please go over there. Go over there. I don't know if you got a man. I don't know if the guy you were sitting next to was your man. Let Miguel do what he do. But Miguel lets us know that he likes vanilla sex. He's not into the weird stuff because I guess a producer asked him, since you dress up as like certain things, does that mean that you also like to do that during sex? So he says, no, and that 
He likes the vanilla thing, but he can still not be boring while doing vanilla. Okay. Can we ask the people that you had sexual relations with that you did vanilla with if you're still exciting during vanilla sex? Miguel? Okay. Listen, that's that's for, for you and your partners to figure out uh, if, you, if you say so, whatever. But we move on to him explaining about his life growing up and that his mom left him when he was younger. So that has been an occurring thing with him and females and his life moving forward. So I guess that might play out into his little situation ship with Lindy when they get married and their journey here for the next eight weeks. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But I just put in my notes, his little female friends seem like a little bit of haters to me, low key. Um, let's see if they're going to interfere in his relationship with, within these next eight weeks. Eight weeks for them, uh, half a year for us since it's like once a week. But it, it'd be like 20 episodes for this whole season. Goodness gracious. Anyway, we're going to move on to Alexis and Justin. Justin tells his brother and his sister-in-law that he's getting that he's getting married in two weeks. They literally laugh at him in his face. You know, poor Justin. And he explains to us that he was engaged before, but the wedding was broken off a month before because the girl wanted an older man with some money. And she didn't want to live the struggling life like the rest of us in America. So she was like, listen, I'm a... Listen, Justin, I can't be with you no more. I got to get me an older man who's already in his career, who got some money, who could take care of me so I could be a housewife out in these streets because going to work is ghetto. Listen, Justin, sorry, but at the end of the day, you lucky she told you right then and there. You lucky she told you before you walked down the altar, before you signed some papers. Justin, I'm sorry. You know, that's very unfortunate. That she done left you, but at the, end, at the end of the day, count this as a blessing that she did it before you ruined your life. I understand y'all probably already paid for some venues and stuff, but it's okay, Justin, you know, just, it's okay. It's okay. You see, you are married at first time now, you know, and maybe Alexa is better looking than your ex. So you, you could take that as as a win uh, when that, that time comes, when you walk down the aisle. Or, yeah, okay. So we're going <laughs> to move on. Uh, he also lets us know that he's been celibate for one and a half years. Good for you. Hey, if that's what you want to do with your life, by all means, you know, it's hard for some people to do that. So the fact that you was able to do that for almost two years, hey, more power to you. Kudos to you. So his brother and sister-in-law are apprehensive and Justin gets a little emotional and chokes up because he didn't get the reaction that he was expecting to get with his brother and sister-in-law. Not really seeming like they support him in a decision. But, you know, at the end of the day, not everybody's going to be happy. I mean, I know everybody would like to have their family support them no matter what, which at the end of the day, they did. But, of course, it's understandable if they're going to be a little like, you sure you want to do this? Because I don't I don't see this as a good look. And as someone mentioned on Twitter, <laughs> yeah, we've seen all these other seasons, how they've done played out. It's understandable that someone would feel, I don't know, bro. I mean, let's look at last season with Lindsay and Mark. I mean, PTSD. But we're going to move on to Alexis. She tells her friends, all males. My husband made a... <laughs> he made a joke like, oh, those must have been <laughs> All three of the men that proposed to her that she said, no. I did laugh. But okay, she told all her three guy friends that she's getting married. And, you know, they're guys. So they're just like, oh. Congratulations, I guess. I mean, cool. They didn't seem too phased by it. Probably she already forewarned them. Like, listen, can you just come on here? So, you know, I can say I'm getting married. Da, 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 da. So they probably were just like, all right, cool, whatever. So she explains to us that she's been proposed to three times before. And she asked her friends on advice of what she needs to do to better herself to prepare for marriage. So they gave her a few little advice. And all I she kept saying is she wants a tall man. Nothing else. She said that throughout the whole damn episode. She wants a tall man. She's like, oh, I don't know if I could do like a little 5'9". She's like, I guess I could settle for a 5'9". But if it could be like 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". She didn't go up to 6'8". But you wanted someone tall. So you you got that, Alexis. But it seemed like it's too tall for you. Beggars can't be choosers. Anyway, we move on to Kristen and Mitch. So Kristen tells her friends that she's getting married in two weeks. And, you know, they're just all like Valley girls. So they're like, oh, my God, what? Are you serious? 
that is crazy. But, you know, that is such a Christian thing of you to do. Yeah, you know, I could do a little bit of listening to Valley Girls, but at the same time, I'm just like, I, I can't. I can never spend a whole 24 hours with a valley girl. So, okay, I'll give them the little two seconds to say what they got to say to their friend Kristen and stuff. But, you know, it, it was, I'm glad it was cut short. So, <laughs> um, Kristen, she's been engaged before and literally was going to get married to a man, but two weeks before the wedding. Here come homeboy mistress coming up to her talking about, yeah, me and homeboy We've been having an affair for like six months. So I don't know what transpired of those six months. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know what done transport, whatever. But pretty much homeboy done been cheating on her for at least six months of what she know with a mistress. Who knows who else he would have, he was doing things with before the mistress or probably during the mistress too. So mistress is probably getting cheated on too. I don't know. But obviously, Kristen like, okay, yeah, I'm not getting married to this guy. Wedding's off. So they no longer together. The wedding got broke off. All that stuff. Whatever. So I'm just kind of like, so how did the homeboy react when you when you told him that you felt, okay, I, I just be wanting to know some of these things. Like, you want to let us know the stuff that be happening that has you heard. But, I, like, sometimes you're like, Six okay. Listen, I'm tired. I feel like when I get tired, my mind starts rum rambling. I start rambling. I don't know what I be saying, but I'm gonna try to stay focused, okay? I'm gonna try to stay focused. So the friends ask her what if the sex sucks. She didn't really give an answer, but I guess she's just trying to stay optimistic. But she also lets them know that she told she told everybody already but her daddy. And she's not gonna tell her daddy until the day of the wedding. So she already told him the location to come there nice and nicely dressed. And that's when she's going to break it to him that she's getting married at first sight to that day and wants him to walk her down the aisle. The friends call her crazy and I'm just like, I don't see this working out for you, Krista. I don't see this working out greatly for you to, because listen, what you're not about to do, you're not going to bring me to a venue dressed up. I don't even know the occasion, so I might not even be properly dressed up, dressed up have me on camera to tell me you getting married today and you want me to walk you down the aisle. I feel like I would look at her like, girl, you crazy? You brought me for this? You couldn't tell me this like two weeks ago? So now all my emotions are all mumbo jumbled because now I got to figure out if I want to walk my own daughter down the aisle. Kristen, you better be a daddy's girl, boy, because, <laughs> listen, if I were to do something like that to my dad, he would, he would tell me, no, I'm not walking down the aisle, and you're not getting married. So, I mean, she'll probably get through with it because, you know, we're going to see her on this season, so he's probably going to do it for the sake of his daughter. But, listen, you one lucky girl, Chris, because I know a lot of daddies, mine, first and foremost, who would not be doing all of that. But, okay, so... We move on to Mitch. He tells his brother, his sister-in-law, his nieces, and his mom that he's getting married two weeks. They're so happy for him. He lets us know that his father passed away in 2014. So, unfortunately, uh, Mitch, I'm uh, sorry for your loss. That must suck. But at least you have family that support you, that are happy for you. Uh, when he was giving his little speech about his personality and his dating life and what brought him to come on the show and sign up for Married at First Sight, all I wrote in my notes was he's giving me minimalist vibes. You know, he rides his bike everywhere, it seems like. And, you know, you know, he likes to go out and stuff, I'm sure. But for the most part, he seems like very simplistic. He don't need all the extravagant things. So if that's what he likes, that's what he likes. I mean, it ain't for me. But, Mitch, if that's what you do, that's what you do. I mean, okay. So the only part about Mitch that I don't am not fond of. He admitted to us, to America, that he turns into a little bit of a Kevin when he goes out to eat. Kevin, meaning the male version of a Karen. Uh, yeah, so he goes to the restaurant. He tells his brother, you know I'm not going to go to a restaurant and not complain if my glasses is half empty. My sister-in-law was over. She was watching with me. Me and her looked at each other like, excuse me? 
Say what now? So so you purposely just try to you you, you you're purposely just trying to create conflict where there's no conflict. Like, oh, you're the only person in the restaurant, uh, Mitch. So so someone's just supposed to be at your beck and call. Why don't you hire a butler if that's the case? But you're a minimalist. So, like, I don't understand. You should look at your glass as half full. You know, Mitch, you, you could have kept that to yourself, bro. You you, you really could have kept that to yourself. You really didn't not to, need to let us know that. Because now I'm looking at you sideways because I'm just like, for real? You, you won't give a... You gonna give a waiter waitress a hard time because you're okay. They don't get paid enough for that shit. They they really don't. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, that's that's your new name, Kevin. But whatever, we are gonna move on because I'm not gonna talk about him too much longer. We are gonna move on to Morgan and Ben. And Morgan tells her friend she's getting married in two weeks, and they seem happy for her. I didn't even write down what their reaction was. But I just wrote mainly she reminds me of like a mixture of Dakota Fanning. Is it Dakota Fanning? No. Why did I put that? No. The girl who played Anastasia Steele. I don't remember. I could have sworn her name was Dakota something, but I don't think it's the Fanning. Whatever the case may be. She reminds me of Anastasia Steele from Fifty Shades of Grey and another girl, I don't know her name. But she played on one show on Nickelodeon. I for, I don't even remember what it was about. It was just about, like, you know, kid stuff, like high school, middle school, high school-ish, preteen. I don't know. But a specific girl, if I seen a picture, I could be like, yes, that's the girl. So she reminds me of Anastasia Steele and that girl mixed together. But she seemed like a badass, and that's what Mitch talking about he wants. And she's so much of a badass that she she <laughs> she chipped her friend's tooth. So, obviously, when people doing a confessional, so I mean, you see what they look like. You see all up in their teeth and stuff. So, I mean, I seen that, but I'm like, I'm not paying too much attention. Like, okay, she got a chipped tooth. You know how many people got chipped crooked tooth? I got a chipped crooked tooth, so whatever. But when she said her friend and her was playing kickboxing, and she's such a badass that she chipped her, her tooth. And that's why she got the little chipped tooth right there. And I'm like... So we're not gonna get this fixed? Like, I don't understand. Like, did she did she pay for your dental work? Like, it was just all easy breezy lemon squeezy? Cause I'll be looking at my friend like, so you gonna pay for this shit or no? Uh, hold on, I got a whole chip too, cause of you. Not cause of me, cause of you. Did she say sorry? She just laughing about it, but I I, I would be genuinely pissed. Like, you, you chipped my tooth. Okay, well, you know, some friends, they they say, oh, no, girl, it's okay. It's fine. No, it's not fine with me. You check my tooth, I'm, I'm going to send you the invoice from the damn Sage Dental down the street. You know, you're not about it. Okay. You got nice friends in Morgan because if we were friends, I'm sorry. You, you're going to get a bill in the mail. I'm sorry. Okay, we're moving on. Uh, We get to Ben. He tells his friends he's getting married. They're happy for him. And he's a mama's boy because he lets us know that he doesn't, when he's dating a girl or talks to a girl, he always compares them to his mom. But yeah, he's frugal too. So it's like you put in so much high standards on a girl, but you can't even turn your AC on because you talk about your AC. You don't even turn your AC on because you frugal. So you try to save every penny and cent that you can. You only, uh, what he talking about? He only does laundry between four to six or he don't do laundry between four to six. No, four to nine. 4 to 9 p.m. Because those are peak hours to get your laundry done. And he doesn't turn on his AC. He leaves the windows open for fresh air. Your house must smell. And I'm not even saying smell musky, but people who don't put on their AC in the house, your house smells like something. Something just be sniffing. Just, listen, you need AC circulation. Okay, y'all live in California. Y'all in San Diego. I don't know the weather over there, but at the same time, I highly doubt it's like easy breezy. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Mm -mm. No. He called one of his exes Voldemort because she cheated on him. Now, granted, granted, that was wrong for her to cheat on you, so I'll give you that. 
to the point you saying Voldemort. Okay, little extreme, been a little extreme, but okay. That's how you felt in the moment because you was mad at her. Like, I'll give you that because she done cheated on your ass. But I'm still on this AC part because AC is a very important thing for me. Uh, AC is a beautiful thing. And um, the fact that he doesn't use AC is just bothering me. It, it, it really is. So so you you had the experts come to your house during this whole uh, process, application process. You let them sweat in your whole house when they came to see what you what you had going on in your in your house. You, you let them sweat in there. Did they find you for that? Cause they they must have been in and out your house, huh? Cause no AC really. You really you sure it was because the girl the, the girl cheated on you? You sure it wasn't just because she was tired of your frugal ass? I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry, Ben. I mean, you might be a nice guy. You seem like a nice guy and stuff. But this frugality thing, yeah. It's not for me because he even said, last time I'm going to say about Ben and then I'm going to move on because we already got 21 minutes. Uh, he said when it's him and his wife's anniversary, he's going to get his wife's socks as an anniversary gift. Ben, uh, yeah, I'm going to need you to keep your socks to yourself. You might as well not give me no gift if that's the case. You're giving me damn socks. Are they going to have gold flakes on them or something? Because I don't need socks for the anniversary. I already got like a how many packs of socks in my drawer. I don't need any more. Okay, Ben, you keep the socks to yourself. I don't know what it is about Asian men in socks because Johnny done gave Bao some socks on their wedding day. <laughs> No, or was it Bao? No, sorry, Bao gave Johnny socks on, on their wedding day. Sorry, excuse me for that. But yeah, uh, Ben, keep the socks, please. Uh, we don't need the socks, okay? I'm sorry. We don't need the socks. We're going to move on to uh, Stasia. Stasia, Stasia, Stasia. Innate, okay, S innate. <laughs> she tells her mom that she's getting married. The mom seems like, she was like, oh, God bless the, the guy you about to get married to. So, Stasia lets us know that she doesn't know her biological father, but she was raised by her mom and her stepdad, so that's cool. And she emancipated herself at 17. She's a go-getter. And pretty much she came out married at first sight because her biological clock is ticking. She got everything she wanted but a man and some kids. And she's 37, so she's like, she got to have a kid sometime. Okay. If that's all right. Cool. Seems fair enough, I guess. So, the mom... Only thing is like, okay, you know, there's prenups, but are you, you know, thinking about getting a postnup for your husband? So Stasia was like, yeah, or Stasia. She's like, yeah, she's been thinking about that. And the mom asked, so what if he's not willing to sign a postnup? So Stasia was like, she don't know. I'll keep going from Stasia and Stasia. I don't know which one it is. I have to watch the episode again. But she <laughs> doesn't know if she'd be cool with that. So she doesn't really answer, but she'll be like, I don't know about all that. But, I mean, when we get to Nate, he seemed like he got himself going together. I mean, he first off, he tells his friends he's getting married in two weeks. And they're excited for him. And like I said, he's all about making money. He talks about all his uh, little stocks and networking things he got going on and stuff. Good for him. Good for him. We don't need to see the screen of him doing that. Like, I I'll believe you. Okay, whatever. You're not my husband, so I could, I could really care less. But, you know, that's what you say. You do. All right, cool, Nate. You know, you don't got to show us the whole blueprint of, you know, Robin Hood on your, your screen and stuff. But, that's, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, So he does all that. And he has female friends, so he said it will be an issue if she doesn't like the fact that he be hanging out with his little female friends. Okay, so as long as you're okay with her hanging out with her guy friends, we should be fine, Nate. Cool. So we move on to the females and the males. They meet up for the first time. Everyone's nervous, of course. And Kristen talking about she finds it weird for older guys on the show. She didn't say that word for word, but... I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, Kristen, please. Okay. Everybody's different. Everybody got different lifestyles and had different lives and different personalities. So there's so many different reasons why someone may get married at 24 versus 44. Does it really matter the age at this point? No, it doesn't. Stop talking. You in your 30s, you on this damn show. Shut up. Anyway, we move on to what else people talked about. 
Morgan said it would be a deal breaker for her. Uh, for, see, I can't talk. If her man is frugal. Meanwhile, we got uh, Ben. He's, he's frugal. He don't turn on his AC. So as long as he come into your house, uh, Morgan, you guys should be fine. Okay? Don't go to his house. Okay? Bring, bring one of those portable fans with you when you go in because the man don't got no running AC in his house. I'm so sorry for you. Uh, Alexis let us know she ain't really feeling Lindy like that because she talked too much. Even though Alexis said she talked too much herself. Okay. So, Lindy lets us know she don't like passive men. But Miguel seems like one of those passive guys. So, good luck with that. And then we're going to move on to the wedding dress shopping. Alexis goes wedding dress shopping. The dress she chooses is beautiful. Don't really like the uh, beige nipple pads to you know hide her nipples and stuff but i mean other than that it's a beautiful dress oh uh, we get to justin he goes tuck shopping the tux he chooses is nice it's okay i kind of like the first one better the brother didn't like it but i kind of like the first one better because i don't know it just seemed more like his style but the second one was nice too nice design suede all that stuff that was cute so we get stasia she goes dress shopping the first dress she put on i thought was gorgeous the second one she chose it was, it was gorgeous, too, but I personally like the first one more than the second one. But if that's what the girl loves, that's what the girl loves. So I'm just, that was just not my, my little two cents. We got Nate. He goes tux shopping. The tux he chose, I didn't like it at all whatsoever. They look like he got a vampire. He looked like he uh, auditioning for the Adams family. I don't know, but I didn't like it. But he liked it, so I guess we're going to go with that. <laughs> And then we get to the bachelor and bachelorette parties. Now, this part, for the most part, wasn't too bad, except for one part. Morgan being a wild card, going on the table, getting money, putting her boobs and whatnot, dancing and all that stuff. That's cute, I guess. Then um, she lets us know she hasn't had sex in seven months. That's okay. You don't got to have sex every damn day or every week or every month. I mean, it, it just depends on what you like. I mean, if you don't like the fact you didn't have had sex in seven months, I mean, I don't I don't know what to tell you. Like, do you just want to go out here and have sex or you want to have a relationship and have sex? I mean, things happen. I'm sorry. Okay, there's masturbation. Um, I know it's not the real thing, but. I, I mean, I don't know what you wanted us to do with this information, Morgan. But, um, okay, we're going to move on to Alexis. Uh, she never seen an uncircumcised penis, and she's scared of uncircumcised dick. Okay. Well, I guess that's something you and uh, Justin going to have to figure out amongst yourselves. So, you know, if he's circumcised, then you have nothing to worry about. But if he, if he ain't circumcised um god bless god bless so we move on to the men and justin said he's not into strippers but you know when the strippers around him he had to look away okay you sure you don't like strippers or you just try not to get tempted just and let us know what that is because you've been celibate for one and a half years so i'm sure you you you're feeling really tempted right now being around ass and titties all over the damn place. But okay. Ben looked like he reserved. And Nate is loving the strippers, okay? He tells them to go ahead, get comfortable, do the thing. They dancing all up on him. Then he tells one of the uh, strippers to go on their knees, you know, goes to commercial for dramatic effect, comes back from commercial for dramatic effect. And she willingly obliges and gets on her knees. I'm clutching my invisible pearls here and the nigga had first off what did where he get the whipped cream from where he get the whipped cream from okay she go on her knees he he probably already shaking why she go on her knees he probably already shaking the can of whipped cream getting ready you know what i'm saying she gets on her knees and you just you just see <sighs> all up in her mouth getting on her neck and stuff i'm like oh Oh, they didn't blur this out on, on TV. I'm like, oh. The guy's looking at him like, bro, like, I don't know what you're doing, right? But but he was in it. I'm just like, oh. 
we know what you like, Nate. But I'm like, damn, we we just we we just doing this like what 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 Stasia Stasia what was she gonna say? I wonder what I mean if she's cool with it, then you know by all means do you, bro. But I was just looking at that scene. I'm like, oh. Well, damn, I mean, how way to make something censored that kind of is very uncensored-like-esque. But, uh, okay, that made for an interesting part. We're talking about it. So, I mean, there you go, Nate, uh, I guess. But, uh, yeah, we move on from that. So, Justin, he gets annoyed with his brother because the brother's talking about he don't think Justin's ready for marriage. So, Justin gets in his feelings. They kind of have a little riffraff, but... Nothing too much because the brother still showed up for the wedding anyway. So, you know, people going to bicker and stuff, whatnot. But they, they talked it out later. So that that's fine. They just, you know, the brother is probably just kind of like looking out, being overprotective. Of course, that's what all older brothers, siblings, even younger siblings do. <laughs> that ain't nothing new. Justin, you'll be fine. You just get through this thing. You know how some family members be. The only one I kind of will side with is... uh. What's her name? Kristen's daddy. Because I'm still on the, you really going to bring me here on the day of to let me know you getting married. But I guess we'll get to that uh, maybe next episode whenever they show her getting married. So we move on to the night. I don't know what night. It said five days before the wedding or something. Nate and Miguel. Okay. Now this whole next scene is 100% sponsored by James Allen, okay? We have Miguel and Nate. They go on jamesallen.com to choose the wedding ring and the, well, the engagement ring and the wedding band for their wives, okay? And they have female friends there to help guide them through the website. It's only three steps, guys. It's three steps, okay? You go, you go choose this. I didn't do anything with her. You choose this, that, and this. And you're, you're done. So much of advertisement that literally one of the girls that, the, I think the girl that was with Miguel, she had to let us know. Yeah, it's just really that easy. It's that simple. You just go here. This is, this is where you find the cut. This is where you find the metal. This is where you find the stone. It's really that easy. Then you press done and complete and you're done. Wow. Wow, it's, it's just that easy. Just one, two, three, guys. Wow. Thank you, jamesallen.com. You know, they, they did it at the end of last season. And they did it this one. Like a whole advertisement section. Whole advertisement scene for jamesallen.com. You know, my question is, how much is James Allen paying Lifetime for this? Unless the James Allen is a website that married at first sight made. Because of all the damn rings that they be buying for these people to be on this damn show. I don't know. But thank you. Thank you, jamesallen.com. Thank you. You know, just three steps. One, two, three, guys. Jamesallen.com, okay? So we're going to move on. <laughs> uh, everyone does their little video diary. They nervous and all that stuff the night before the wedding. Okay, whoop de woo What else is new? Move on. Finally get to wedding day. Oh, my gosh, guys. This was like probably 10 something when we finally get to the wedding day. I'm like, wow. We waited the last hour for this shit. The last hour. Okay. Everyone does the little video diary of their, you know, they're excited and nervous and all that stuff. But they're so ready to get married. Who's first to go get married? Alexis and Justin's ass. So... Justin shows his friends a little two rings from jamesallen.com, another product placement advertisement scene that he got for uh, Alexis. jamesallen.com. And then we have Alexis. You know, she's getting ready. She got her makeup and her hair done. But you see, she's starting to get a little nervous, getting a little emotional. The mom walks in with all cleavage out. All of her little, little, her little itty bitty, titty committee cleavage out. Listen, I'm not talking about the mom i'm just like okay <laughs> you trying to scoop up a man at this uh little wedding shindig mama please let us know because i'm like she came she came ready and dressed to to snatch one of one of uh justin's uncles 
in the audience or something. I don't know if he even had an uncle there, but she was ready. So <laughs> the mom comes in. She's hugging Alexis and stuff. This was one Alexa. She just, I, I don't know what that was. I, I really don't know, guys. She was crying dramatically. She was like, I don't know if I'm doing, like, the right thing. As the mom was trying to wipe her teeth. I'm like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> now, I watched the preview last week of this scene. I died laughing last week when I saw this. I died laughing. I'm like, what is this? What are you doing, Alexis? Is this really how you cry? Because if it is, like people said on Twitter, we do not need to see this, all that this season. I do not need you crying like that all season. For goodness gracious, my nephews don't even cry. Like, what is this, Alexis? What is this? You really showing off a TV? Is this what it is? I'll give you that. If you're showing off a TV, Alexis, I'll, I'll give you that. But what is this? No. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But, <laughs> Alexis, please. Girl. No. So, we move on from that. She, she going to gather herself. She going to come out with that. Uh, Justin, his mama, and his brother about to walk down the aisle. The mama get a little emotional. Justin's brother gets a little emotional. You know, they're still there for each other. They're still brothers at the end of the day. So they hug it out and all this stuff. They squash all the beef and stuff. So that's cool. That was cute to see for a little scene that the brother got a little emotional. And that's saying he loved his brother just overprotective. We understand, bro. Okay, we understand. Just just calm it down because you know your brother emotional enough as it is. And okay, you know him better than us. So... After that, we get Alexis. She receives the ring, the not the wedding band, but the the engagement ring, wedding ring, whatever, from Justin. Once again, from James Allen. JamesAllen.com, guys. Easy as one, two, three, okay? Uh, a lot of product placement, okay? A lot of advertisement for James Allen. You might as well just have done a James Allen commercial before and after each time the uh, the show went on commercial break. At this point, uh, Lifetime Married at First Sight. I ain't never seen so many advertisements in so much in my life in a three-hour episode. Y'all never done this before. Y'all don't need to do it now. But, okay, thank you, jamesallen.com. Easy as one, two, three. That's going to be the new slogan whenever they show a James Allen thing on the damn show. So, she loves the ring. She accepts the ring and whatnot. All the girls like, oh, all that stuff, right? So we get to the time finally in the last like 10 minutes of damn two, three hour episode. She walking down the aisle. Justin just loves what he sees. He's like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Tells her she's so beautiful. She what she is. You know, I'm not knocking that. She is beautiful. She look good. And Alexis just seemed happy that he's uh tall. So he tells her she's beautiful. She's just like, oh wow, you're so tall. So he tells her like he's 6'8". They do the ceremony when they're talking about each other. You know, Justin's family would like you to know. Alexis' family would like you to know. Uh, They, they want to let Justin know that she's very creative and likes to make molds of vaginas on with clay. You know, that's that's okay. You know, Alexis, if that's your quirk, that's cool and all. Um, I didn't think that needed to be said during the ceremony. I don't know what her family was thinking, but... I guess they're letting it all out the, on the table. They're just letting it all out. I, I, I wouldn't have let that all out. But, you know, we got to do this for the TV show. So they kiss. It was okay. Then we, <laughs> we move on to them, you know, going to converse amongst themselves. And Alexis now want to let us know that 6'8 is uncomfortably tall for her. Girl, I know you're not complaining. When you was talking about you need a man that's 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". So, oh, because he's three inches taller than 6'5", it's a problem for you? Now it's a problem for you? You wanted a tall man, but but you you mad that he's, like, taller than you expected? Or that you wanted? Beggars cannot be choosers, Alexis. Would you rather a short man or a guy that's taller than what you expected? Girl, like, I, girl, bye, please. I mean, she did let us know that he's not her type. I feel like a lot of these people think that 
what the experts done chose is not their type. Or, oh, well, you came on this damn show knowing people was going to pick out your spouse. Get over it. Just move on with it like most of them kind of did. So, Alexis, you, I don't want to hear it because you came on the damn show. So, y'all should know you're not going to get Mr. Perfect. Okay, so what you get is what you get at this point. I, I don't want to hear none of that. But even though she kind of feeling like it's okay, you know, I'm going to just roll with the punches. Justin, he he happy. He's through the roof. He's over the moon. He like, oh, he got so lucky. And he's stuck, but he wants to be stuck. And that's where the episode ends. Three hours, guys. I, I gave it all I got. It's about to be midnight, for goodness sakes. I should be asleep right now. But, you know, you know, Lifetime don't care about us. You know, they don't care that we got work the next day or nothing. That, you know, th that's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, married at first sight, Lifetime. Thank you. Thank you for the three hours. Uh, didn't give much, but it was entertaining enough for me to watch. So, <laughs> I don't, okay. You, you can see I'm ready to go to sleep. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment. What do you think of these three hours of episodes? And what did you think about the strong sponsorship? I didn't even say that word right, but that's okay. From jamesallen.com. And as easy as one, two, three. Which just, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. They sponsoring this video too, even though they really not. But let me know what you guys thought. And I'll see you next week, guys. Bye.